Okay, we are live streaming. Good morning. Yay, we finally did it. <laughs> so apologies for anyone who was trying to watch this live stream on my business page or any other platform. I'm using a new service and we couldn't get it all worked up so or connected. So we're going to do it this way. And then I'll put the I'll make a recording and I'll send it out to everybody on all the platforms. So without any further ado, I just want to introduce uh, my friend and colleague, Mary Beth Swan. We're going to be talking about flower essences. But first, I want to just talk to you about Mary Beth. Um, I, have so to, she, I have to tell you, it's Maribeth. Maribeth. I'm sorry. That's I'm sorry, OK. Maribeth. We're such good friends. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> She's been supporting women's health journeys with the vibrational medicine of flower essences and intuitive counsel for five years. And she's led ceremonies celebrating solar and lunar cycles for 16 years. So Mary Beth was drawn into working with holistic earth medicine after a debilitating accident, which deeply educated her about our subtle bodies, nervous systems and bioelectric dynamics. And she utilizes compassionate inquiry, breathwork, kinesiology, as well as flower essences and gem elixirs in her work. And adept at holding sacred space, she's intuitive and trauma-informed through her experience and education. And we're going to put her information, um, if you want to connect with her, in the comments section. And uh, she lives in Massachusetts with her altar, crystals, two dulcimers, and a bounty of herbs and houseplants. Welcome to this interview, finally, Mary Beth. Thank you, Rita. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Of course, of course. So I have I put in the Calm Mom Alliance group that I was gonna be interviewing you and several people were like, oh, I love flower essences. I love flower essences. So my first question to you is how did you, what's your, what's your hero origin story? How did you get into this thing called flower essences? Well, it first started after a really bad breakup. I had a friend of mine was an herbalist and I had just had a really horrible heartbreak and she made me a flower essence and I could feel the medicine immediately. As soon as you take them subcutaneously, you can take them, put them on your pulse points. You can put them in your bath water, in your drinking water, in your tea. And I carried this bottle around with me like it was my teddy bear. I mean, it went everywhere with me. And fast forward about 10 years, I was in this wild accident where a table collapsed underneath me while I was sitting on it. And I was in incredible amount of pain and I ended up having to go off my prescription pain meds. And when you're in pain, you can become really mean. And I was getting mean to my caregivers, to myself. And I literally, I had a dream about borage. I don't know if anyone's familiar with the flower borage, but it's a kind of a violet purple flower. It's in the shape of a star. And its message for our energetic bodies is courage. And I woke up from that dream and said, oh my goodness, I have to need to get some borage. And so I, that, I delved into this deep study of flower essences, um, specifically through... Um, Molly Sheehan of Green Hope Farm and Findhorn Foundation and Edward Botch, which he's been um, working. He he founded the Flower Essences in officially in 1930s um, and also a mystic from the 12th century named Hildegard von Bingen was also recorded as using flower essences. And so I began studying them copiously. Then I decided I wanted to grow my own flowers from seed to make my own essences. Wow. And then I started sharing those with some of my friends and colleagues. And someone uh, called me and said, I have a client who wants to see you. And wow. I said, for what? <laughs> she said, for a flower essence consult. And so that's how it all began about five wow. years ago. And I feel you know, these, the wounded healers, right. And, and how the light shines on the wound and makes you realize you can support others through what you've learned. And so it's, it's such an honor to do the work and to have people trust me with their innermost challenges. Wow. Wow. That's a very, uh, intense story. I mean, it is. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, so tell tell us more because I am I'm ignorant around this. How how do you what is a flower essence in essence? Like how do you how does it's, that happen? It's a really good question because they're they seem kind of esoteric because they are vibrational medicine. So a flower essence is made um, when you you I'm a purist when I make my flower essences, I cut the plant directly into a bowl of water and the bioelectric imprint of the flower is usurped through the sunlight into the water to hold mm. the energetic signature of the flower. Um, so it's not physical medicine. It's basically water. And mm. so the brilliant thing about it is it's so gentle that anyone can take them, that it doesn't matter if you're on any other supplements or medications, it's not going to interfere with anything. And they're so gentle that they really work with you where you are. Does that make sense? Yeah. So they kind of fill in where they, they're needed. It kind of reminds me of Reiki. Uh, when I go to Reiki, they say mm. it's going to go where it needs to go. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And so they're actually considered, essences are considered bipolar because they have the medicine for what you need and they see where the imbalance is and then they can come in and support you where that imbalance is occurring. Wow. So how did you, I'm sure you study this, but like, did you start going through books? Did you experiment on yourself? Did you all of the above? Like, how did yes. you figure out what's going to work? What's not going to work? And all of the above. I read everything that I could find on flower essences. Um, Molly Sheehan from Green Hope Farm. She was my biggest mentor because she utilizes kinesiology, which is muscle testing. If you think your audience is familiar yeah. with that, there's a lot of different people, ways that people use that. And so everyone, I think all flower essence practitioners develop their own um, process. And so my process with a client is to have a, a session with them. A bunch of flowers will come to mind while I'm on the phone with them. I'll write them down. After the session, I'll do a short meditation on the client and then use my kinesiology to test if those flowers are best for the client at that time um, before I'll make the essence for them, which I do on a devoted altar with a Reiki prayer. It sits in a crystal grid until it tells me it's ready to come off the altar. And depending on the level of intensity of trauma or emotional challenge the client is dealing with, sometimes that essence may sit there for three weeks. Mm. Sometimes it may yeah. sit there for five days really interesting with children and pets, about 20 minutes. That makes they're, sense, they have less stuff. They just they're so to... ready to receive, you know, they're so connected yeah. to source. Yeah. Um, yes. So, so this, I know this may be a hard question to answer, but like how long does it take? Like before you see any changes or improvement, does it depend on what's going on? Is it depends on what's, Good Tell question. Me. Good yeah. question. It really varies. I Part of it depends on how sensitive of a person you are. Um, if you're someone who's connected to nature already, you're, you're going to resonate with the flowers. Um, I live out close to a city, so there's a lot of people in concrete. And the further away you are from nature, mm -hmm. you may have a harder time connecting. I definitely, when I was experimenting before I was practicing, gave them to different people and friends and family who said, I don't feel anything. But mm -hmm. Just doing anything, I don't feel anything. And there are other people who say, oh my goodness, I felt it as soon as I held the bottle. I felt yeah. it in the package through through the cardboard. Yeah. You know, it's just wow. such a range. We're all such different energetic beings and how tuned in you are to nature, but also to yourself. So yeah. because we are nature, the essences are connecting you deeper to nature itself. And and part of taking essences um, in my practice is that people develop a, a ritual in their self-care and connection with the flower. And so I advise that people take their essences first thing when they would get up somewhere in between dream time and then right before they go to bed. And the essence mm -hmm. will come with a mantra that I'll give you and the color of the flower and the chakra bodies that it resonates with because they correlate. Mm -hmm. 
you know, a white flower will be for all of your chakra bodies, a red flower is for your root chakra. Um, I make a lot of blends. Um, and so when you develop that connection and ritual to this flower, which is connection to the divine, to mother earth, to however you, whatever religion you might practice or God that you worship, it's all coming from source, right? So you develop a, a relationship, you deepen a relationship yeah. to, to source to nature and to your own nature. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's interesting because um, I wanted to ask you about anxiety and things like that, because um, I, I work with moms and they're stressed out. A lot of them, they're overwhelmed and feeling that stress, chronic stress uh, is a big issue for them. And then I was just something that you said, I was listening to a podcast where they were talking about what anxiety is. And this particular expert said that anxiety really, in, in for the most part, is a, a lack of connection with yourself at your mm -hmm. deepest level. And it usually happens in childhood trauma, things like that. You yeah. get, you just get disconnected because for whatever reason you didn't get what you needed. Um, and then of course you blame yourself and, you know, we've all heard the story. So, so when you talk about connection, I was just like, yeah, of course it's going to make you feel better because you're going to feel more connected because that's, that's the game. How can we feel more connected? Yes, exactly. Question, so if, could you tell us, and obviously you wouldn't give out any personal information of your clients, but did you have a client where uh, he or she had something that you could, would be relatable to mom, stress, overwhelm, anxiety, things like that? Well, yeah, I mean, all, I so many stories. One for moms that comes to mind specifically, um, I had a client contact me who just had a miscarriage mm. and was completely overwhelmed and wounded from that loss, obviously. And so we worked on healing that loss. And then her husband really wanted to try again really soon. And she then we worked on trying to be ready emotionally to, to commit to another baby. Yeah. So you're still yeah. so connected to that, to that okay. child. And so, and then we worked on conception and she delivered a healthy baby girl in February of 2022. Wow. So that is a super fun success story to share. Um, and I receive photos on the, on the child's birthday on her birthday every year. Oh, that's uh, so sweet. The celebration. Um, but I support a lot of working moms whom uh, they're trying to handle running a business or a high powered position in addition to supporting their children and also often supporting their parents. Yeah. So caregiver support or when a parent is transitioning, yeah. um, one of my client's fathers just passed and I assisted her through that process of as he was journeying out of the body um and she said it was incredibly peaceful and everyone was able to say goodbye and yeah it was completely unlike any other experience that she'd had um in losing a loved one or previously her mother so I mean flower essences they really can support anything and everything. I have a new client who has Parkinson's, mm. um, whom I've just started working with. Uh, they're really miraculous little healers. And they're everywhere. And they're everywhere. They're, here. they're everywhere. They're and they're in the backyard. They're awesome. Um, and I just want to say, when you think about it, the flowers, yeah. they exist so briefly right? A flower yes. a bloom exists so briefly. So the yeah. power in their medicine, because it's such a fleeting occurrence to, yeah. you know, and maybe that becomes easier to embrace how special they are. Yeah. I think often we find things more precious if they're, if they're finite, if they're kind of rare, or finite, or you only can catch them at certain times for sure. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I mm -hmm. think deadlines are great that way. They make us appreciate <laughs> things, right? Right. Um, so if you were going to talk to a mom, one of our moms, mm -hmm. what, well, what would you, I'm trying to think of the way to say this. 
if if people were going to walk away from this interview with one piece of information, what would you want them to know? I want them to know that nature's out there to support them in so many different ways. Flower essence is just one of them. Um, but that in deepening your self-care rituals, whatever they may be, um, I'm a big proponent of salt baths if your doctor allows it. Um, but with flower essences, I love to create a ritual around the bath and lighting a candle and putting on some music and maybe a couple of drops of your favorite essential oils, flower essences if you have them, and to really make that a process of honoring the divinity within yourself and re reconnecting to, to, to that source that gives us life and that beats our heart, you know, that breathes us, um, if if that's helpful. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think one of the, the, the big things that I learned was for years, I thought that stuff is just extra. It's just a luxury. <laughs> if you, have a you know what I mean? And now it's like, no, this is, a, these are non-negotiables. These are just what I do as, as much as I brush my teeth or I yes. take a shower or whatever. I do things like have those types of baths or sit in nature or take an essence or meditate or do yoga, whatever it is that yeah. helps to center and connect uh, is going to help you. And it's going to help your kids, by the way. That's the other one is sort of we kind of go, no, I'll forget about myself so I can focus on the kids. Well, guess what? You're not going to do a very good job focusing on the kids. And and you show and you're also showing them how not to take care of themselves, by the way. So this is if your focus is on your kids, then you have to take care of yourself if you want to do a good job. So, if mama's not happy, nobody's happy. Exactly. You're the spoke of the wheel. You're, <laughs> yes. you're the, the center, whether you like it or not. So and everything is energy. You know, we see ourselves as separate bodies, but we're all energetically interacting with everything around us. And so your children are interacting with your vibration for their whole lives, whether you're in their physical presence or not, yeah. they, they come from you. So, um, they yes. flower from you, right? Yeah, they flower from you. They are your blooms. So yes, I I I just applaud moms. I think it is the hardest job out there. It's not recognized enough. And um deepening your self-care is ho hopefully that if your your group is not prioritizing it, that they start to. Yeah. It's not a luxury, it's not an add-on, it's a foundation. Yeah, absolutely. So if someone is curious about flower essences, they think uh, maybe it's time for a conversation or what would be the first step that they would need to do? So on my website, I have a website at swanessence.com. Um, I have free discovery calls. So you could sign up for a discovery call and, and speak with me. Um, if you felt that you were ready to dive in, you could just sign up for a flower essence consult and, um, you know, and we would start the journey. Um, in my work, I start my sessions with breath work um, to center the space for uh, us both. And I do my consultations on the phone because I think our voice is our purest essence. And it's easy. And, and I know everyone's into the Zoom world. And especially since COVID, it's it's been such a wonderful way for people to be able to connect in person. Um but I like people to just really relax and not yep. be focused on a visual and, and just listen. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with you all the way. I do most of my coaching on the phone and I'm glad that you explained it that way. I, I'm like, I can't explain it, but being on the phone is very intimate. You're just hearing a voice. I feel like there's a lot that can happen that on zoom maybe actually gets diluted in some way. You like you're saying you're distracted by the image and all that stuff. Well, and your tone and your inflection and maybe when you're discussing something that's really personal and challenging for you, I think it's you're, you become more open if you don't have a camera on you. Yes, indeed. <laughs> I agree. So, Mary Beth, thank you. Mary Beth, thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm once again, I apologize for the technical issue, but we got we got what we needed. We did. And I hope everyone was able to join and or to look at this recording. Please reach out to Mary Beth. Um, uh, I will put her website in the comments section. 
Um, and of course, you can always connect with me or her on Facebook or if you can't figure out where she is, just connect with me and I'll connect you up. But I'm going to have that link for you. Thank you, so, Rita. You're welcome. I hope you have a great day. And I hope everyone wow. else has a great day too. Okay. Bye, everyone. Thanks for having me. Bye.